video builds on the general fitness exercises shown in Fit Kids and aims to develop more tennis specific fitness for 13 to 16 year olds. The video demonstrates 12 fitness sessions over a four week period. Each session will comprise three elements covering coordination, speed and power and endurance exercises. Before every session, players must warm up and stretch. Steady skipping is an excellent way to warm up, but before skipping, it's a good idea to loosen up the lower back and calf muscles. Check the rope length and start 300 to 500 steady skips to raise the body temperature. Start with some simple stretches to loosen out the muscles in the neck. Look up. The purpose of dynamic stretching is to loosen the joints, improve range of movement and begin a daily routine which will help body posture and improve muscle condition. Look to the right, not fast, nice and slowly. Each exercise should be performed slowly and must be under control. Right up and down. Big circles, really make a big circle. Four, five, next. Okay, just isolate. Five times back. Your head up and your back straight. Now. Just keep the arms straight. That's good. And then backwards. From the hip, like a bowling, a ball. Ten pin bowling, yeah? From the ground. Well, right the way through. That's good. Side bend. Over. Over and then just bring it through into a continuing with the circle. That's good. Big circles, few each way. An Olympic lift. With the snatch, make sure the knee stays in line with the ankle. So it's just simply here. As you get looser, come up onto the toes. Be aware of your player's posture throughout these exercises. Make sure that their backs are straight, heads are up, and they are looking forwards at all times. Back straight. Rocking back onto your heel, then onto your toes. The feet and lower legs play an important part in tennis, especially in the area of balance. They, like everything else, need stretching, moving and strengthening. very important to work on the player's coordination skills. The coordination exercises should be developed into a full coordination routine consisting of 12 exercises. This routine should be completed at the start of every session.
purpose of this video, we will demonstrate a single coordination exercise in each of the sessions, but remember that they should be performed as a full routine at the start of every session. Week one. Session one. Heel and toe walks to develop strength and lower leg flexibility. And we're going to do at least three of these over about 10 metres. So make sure they're really well done. Introducing players to plyometric work will help to develop speed and power. Split jumps are a good way of developing leg strength. Some players may need to start these exercises on a soft surface such as grass. Better conditioned players can move to a harder surface such as a tennis court. Circuit training is an excellent way of developing endurance, especially strength endurance. This circuit consists of six exercises. Each exercise should be performed for 20 seconds with 20 seconds rest between each exercise and two minutes recovery between circuits. Two circuits will be sufficient to begin with. Week one, session two. Push. Knee lift Push. skips for developing explosive Push. leg power. Push, good. And now I'm going to do calf springs, a great way of developing explosive speed in the lower leg. Same principles, good posture, good high quality work for a short period of time with a long recovery. Are you ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five. Again. Six. Be aware that some players will need to start these exercises on a softer surface before moving onto the court. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, rest. General endurance work should be varied to stave off boredom. Simple steady running or cycling can be done in a variety of locations such as a gym, or outside on a track or field. Week one, session three. Knee lift skips backwards to help muscle imbalance. Keep upright. Drive upwards with the knee. Drive up with the knee. Good. Speed development exercises using shuttle runs very traditional way to improve players basic speed and also great fun okay when you're ready and go one push off there outside like foot two okay go. changing the pattern and direction push of the shuttles will improve the player's agility around the court and teach players All how right. to push off and transfer their weight which are essential skills in All tennis right. okay. Here we are simply repeating the circuit in session one. It's a good idea to keep a record or training diary of how many reps are carried out at each station. Week two, session one. Side skips to develop rhythm and coordination. Bring the arms, good boy. Now nice and high. Up, up, up high. Hopping is another exercise to develop leg strength. 
Bear in mind that with the beginner, this type of work would usually be started on a softer surface such as grass. As the player is better conditioned, you can move them onto a harder surface. Onto side jumps, which can similarly be done over a hurdle or over a tennis bag. Go. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, rest. To increase variety, add One, extra two, hurdles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, rest. In week two, we are increasing the intensity by adding two more exercises and increasing the number of circuits to three with a work to rest ratio of 25 seconds and two minutes recovery between circuits. Session two. Walking turnouts to increase flexibility around the hip joint. Using a catapult will give you a similar effect to hill sprinting in that it will help you develop that all important speed off the mark over those first few steps. Right, now what I want you to try to do is to think about your body position. It's quite important that you control the catapult. So pushing hard off the baseline, set at the tee, come back again, keeping your weight forward. 10 runs, keep it nice and dynamic. Are you ready? And go. One. Hard, push. Three, go, come on. And push hard again, push. Four, try changing legs this time. Push, five, try and develop strength in both legs. Push, eight. As you get tired, think about using the ground to get you going. Nine. One more. Push. And rest. Good girl. Well done. Are you ready? Go! Come on! Oh! Explosive power sprints over a short distance are a great way of developing forward Go, movement on the court. Hill sprinting can also be right, used to go. build endurance and leg strength, which will improve the player's speed off the mark. Last one. Here we go. Come on, right through. Sprint. Well done. Right fast. Excellent. Week two. Session three. High kicks to improve all round athleticism. Turn it into a skip. Good. Well done. Nice and high. Well done. And go. Keep your back straight. One, As players become two, stronger, three, the individual plyometric four, exercises five, should be put together. But remember to give sufficient recovery periods between each exercise. All speed and power work should be of high quality and should last no more than 10 to 12 seconds followed by five times the recovery. For example, 10 seconds work, 50 seconds recovery. And stop. Good. Again, simply repeat the circuit in week two, session one. Try to make the circuits more interesting by changing the exercises, adding music or using different locations.
session one. Split jumps to develop leg strength. Straight, use your arms. Good girl. Well done. Swing those arms, relax your shoulders. Good girl, well done. Right, we're now going to work on side to side movements. So half court, side to side, getting the idea of pushing hard off the outside leg, using the catapult to assist with that particular body position. Right, ready then. Okay then, and go. Push. Well done. Plyometric exercises can become more and more tennis specific, as in the alley jumps. Keep your shape, good. Touch the net and come back with it. Excellent. In this circuit, we have introduced some new exercises Increase the work to rest ratio to 30 seconds with two minutes recovery between each of the three circuits. Week three, session two. Running to improve posture. Well done. Knees up. Good. Lower. Faster and lower. Faster and lower. Spring. Faster Skipping lower. to develop leg speed. And go. Introducing the use of medicine balls with the catapult will help to develop tennis specific movements such as forehands. Backhands, on, volleys, Ten. and smashes. Excellent. As you get tired, think about using the ground to get you going. Five, six, come on, as you get tired, think about your body position. Seven, push, come on, eight, keep the intensity up. Last two, nine, last one, come on, push, 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 and rest. Good boy, well done, excellent. Good, again, up, two, three, four, rest, excellent, and go. Keep Continue to build up the speed two, and power work three, by repeating four, all the individual five, plyometric exercises six, from previous seven, sessions. Eight, nine, rest, well done, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, rest. And stop. Of the many different ways of developing stamina, this is probably the most tennis specific and can be built up from a small period of five to seven minutes, gradually building up to 10, 12, and even 15 minutes. Week three, session three. Walking balances to help develop specific strength and balance. Lower if you can, a bit lower if you can. Okay. Very good. Nice slow and steady. Hold the balance. That's good. Hold up. Lower if you can, if it feels comfortable. 
Excellent. Good girl. Well done. Steady. Just to get that hold on each time. Good girl. Yeah. And you can change the direction you whirl your arms in. Good. That's good. Just try and take yourself off balance. But think about holding the balance at the centre. Good girl. Very good. Very good. Make the circles even bigger. That's it. Come on. Good. And when you get really strong, I'll give you some weights to hold. All aspects of tennis can be practiced with this catapult. We can adapt it for smashes, for volleys, whatever you like. routines help all aspects of fitness. Develop the routines gradually and introduce variety to the routines. Variety and fun are the keys to improvement. Repeat the circuit in week 3, session 1. Circuit training will also help to develop mental as well as physical toughness. Session one. Javelin crossover steps to improve the rotation of the trunk. Good. Good. Keep the trunk steady. Loosen up. Very good. At this stage, we're being more and more tennis specific. On the move medicine ball exercise is a great way of developing some of this strength work and turning it into more specific power. Nine. Well we're combining many different elements in this exercise. More importantly, we're combining movement in a tennis-related way. Up, more rotation. Right. Come on. Come on, keep with him. Last one. One. On. More leg. More leg. We need to exaggerate the leg. That's the girl. Good. Don't worry about the wall. Come on, knock it down. That's it. Good. Least, at least some cement falling out of the wall. At least. Don't be scared of the wall. We can build another one. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Excellent.
In week four, the circuit training becomes more complex by introducing the pyramid system. Here, the number of exercises remains at eight, but the work to rest ratio is decreased and the recovery time between each of the three circuits is also reduced. Increasing or decreasing the work to rest periods and recovery times helps to develop different types of work pace. Week four. Session two. Resistance pushes to develop leg drive. Good boy. Push. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Sprint. Jumping Good. exercises three, with sprints four, five, are an six. excellent way of developing power and agility. Go. Spin, jump. Spin, jump. Spin, jump. Good. That's better, much better. Now. Spin, 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 spin. Come on, spin. Come on, one, jump. No, jump it. Come on, touch. I know it's low, but don't run through it. Sprint. Come on, just on the way there. Jump it, round it on the way back. And again, go on. Star hurdles can be a fun way to build endurance. This exercise can be varied by introducing relay races and using different patterns of hurdles. Now, go, sprint, jump, and again. Don't trip over it, you go round it on the way back. Jump it, go round it. Come on, a bit of agility. Twist, change direction, turn, sprint, round it. Go, last one, jump, sprint, next one, get ready and go, move. Come on, push. Excellent, well done team. Week four. Session three. Push, push. Backwards running push. for balance and injury push. prevention. Good. Longer sprints will give you the opportunity to balance the abilities of the players by staggering the starts. Push, push, push. When doing pushing exercises, be aware of the safety aspects and match the player's physical abilities when working in pairs. To complete the end of week four, reverse the pyramid circuit. Increase the work to rest periods and recovery time between each circuit. Okay, so we're actually going to get you into the set position. This is the start of every exercise. So you're going to flatten your back into the floor. You're going to tighten your stomach muscles. You're going to hold your hands deep down into your muscles so you can actually feel them working. And you're going to squeeze your waterworks as though you can't go to the toilet. And you're going to hold that for a count of ten. So do all that. Flatten, tighten the squeeze. Keep breathing. So it's nine, eight, seven, six. In addition five, to the exercises four, shown in each session, three, it is also three, vital to work on the player's the core stability. And you're going to do that five times. These okay, exercises so that will again. make the players more so stable, floor, improve posture, and reduce the risk of injury. So you can't pass water. Tighten up your stomach muscles, breathing the whole time, and count to ten. So ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One and relax, and again you've got three more to go. 
So this is actually core stability. We're working on the deep muscles, not the working muscles. You have to work on both. Whenever you actually hit a tennis ball, you're working the working muscles. But the deep muscles, they actually work together and make your trunk stronger. So we're going to do exercises for the front, which is flexion extension. We're going to do some rotation, which is when you hit a forehand and backhand. And we're going to do some exercises to help strengthen the back. It's also important to help prevent injuries as well. OK, this is the progression of the first exercise. And you would only do this exercise when you actually feel you've mastered the last one. And I would give it at least four weeks of completing the last exercise before you go on to this one. So you're going to do exactly the same thing to start off with. You're going to do the set position. So you flatten your back. You tighten up your stomach muscles. You pretend you can't pass water, so you pull in those muscles deep down below. Press your hands in so you can feel those muscles working. And then very slowly, without moving your body or wobbling, you can lift up one foot, 90 degrees. Slow, slow, slow. And again, without moving your back, any positioning on the floor, you're going to lift up the other leg, let it join, come together, and slowly one goes down, and the other one goes down. Again, you can actually do five of these, alternate your legs each time when you're doing these, and then, but with no rest in between. So just five continuously, but as slow as you can. down slowly and again you're breathing the whole time okay this is one of the other basic exercises working the trunk what Holly's going to do she's going to lift up her bottom off the floor she's not going to go up too high she's going to go a little bit further she's going to squeeze her bottom hold it there for two seconds and then very slowly going to go back down to the floor and what you want to do is five seconds up five seconds down with a two second squeeze at the top so up you go, nice and slow. You're going to extend, that's it, lifting up. You're going to squeeze when you get there. And then very slowly, you're going to come back down. You want to make sure your feet are flat on the floor, 90 degrees with your legs, and trying to do as little wobbling as possible. You're going to do five of these. So off you go, five seconds up with a two-second hold. That's it, squeezing your bottom. And then five seconds coming down. That's it trying to make sure that there's as little wobble as possible. And as you get stronger, that will reduce. And again, up you go, nice and slow. If you do extend too high, you will feel a lower back ache. And so you want to make sure you just don't go that high. And every individual is going to be slightly different. So the player will know if they're lifting too high, just as long as you make sure you tell them. OK, this is the next progression. This is working the back as well as the stomach. So all Kirsty is going to do, she's going to lift up until her body is straight. You don't want to lift up too high. If you feel any pressure in the lower back, you want to make sure that you just drop the body a little bit. You want to keep stable. She's going to extend one leg 90 degrees, so it's straight. She's going to then bring that back down, squeezing the bottom as well, dropping down to the floor real slow. And then she's going to repeat that on the other side. So again, coming up, keeping the body still, squeezing the bottom now, extending the leg. That's good. You control it, come back down. And coming back down to the floor again real slow. And trying not to make the body wobble at all. Good. And again, up we go. Extend the leg. Try not to shake at all. That's good. Bring it back down slowly back down to four. And you want to do five on each leg just to make it even. So you're doing ten in all. So second exercise, a basic exercise. You're going to do set position again to flatten your back into the floor, tighten your stomach, making sure you breathe the whole time, and squeezing your bladder so you don't pass water. So you're going to lift up nice and slowly, just slide your rib cage to your belly button, holding for ten, looking through your knees. That's it. Making sure you breathe the whole time for eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly go down, don't slam it down. And again, set position again. So flatten back, tighten stomach, holding your bladder, and up you come nice and slow, looking through the gap in between your legs. Hold it for a count of ten, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and slowly back down. And you do five of these, making sure you get the set position each time. OK, the progression of the last exercise, what Kirsty is going to do, put hands to the head, make sure she does a set position again, so flatten, tighten, squeezing, 
breathing the whole time. She's going to curl up for five seconds, as slow as she can. So it's five, four, three, two, one, and slowly back down. Every time she goes back down to the floor, she redoes the set position, and she can do that five times. That's it, nice and slow. Then reset, and up you go again. Again, she's in the right position. The knees are bent, right angles, feet are flat on the floor. They're not moving. She's trying to keep her trunk, which is working, as stable as possible. You may find that you shake a little bit when you're doing this, but in the end, as you get stronger, that shake will go. This is the basic exercise of the rotation on the core stability. All we're going to do here is a set position, so flatten your back, tighten your stomach, squeeze in your bladder. You're breathing the whole time. You're actually going to rotate the knee out, but only until your back is flat on the floor. You don't want to make sure that your back moves and then bring it back to center, and then you're going to do the other side. This is the only rotational core stability exercise that we're doing, so you want to make sure if you do choose any, that you do this one as well as one of the others. And each player is going to be different doing this. You want to do five each side, 10 in total, but you want to make sure that when you're doing this, that your hips don't move, your back doesn't move on the floor, and that when you're feeling deep down inside, that it's all staying stable. As you progress, you'll find that you'll be able to take that leg out further because the, the deep muscles will be getting stronger. Okay, this is the next progression. This is the only one that we're actually working on, which is working on the deep muscles and on the rotational side. So it's very important that if they're going to do any of the core stability, they make sure they get this exercise in. So what Kirsty's going to do, she's going to do the set position, so flatten, tighten, squeeze in her bladder, and then she's going to lift her foot off the floor just an inch. And all she's going to do, without moving any of the hips or any of the back positions, she's just going to rotate the leg out. As soon as she feels any difference in her body on the floor and in the muscles in the side, then she's going to bring it back in. As you'll see, the better you get at this exercise, the more you'll be able to rotate your leg out. Every player you'll find will be different. When they first start this exercise, they may only be able to rotate their leg out to here, to here, to here, or even further, depending on how strong they are at holding the stability in the center. So you want to make sure that the player, as soon as they start to move, they recognize that feeling, and they come back and they start again. It doesn't matter if you can't rotate your leg out to there because you're actually working the muscles. So make sure you do it technically correct. If she can feel her stomach working, the deep muscles working, but it won't be to a pain, but she'll just feel it tensing. This exercise is getting you ready to work the back on the progression exercise. So this is the first one we're going to do. And you want to make sure you're in the right angle. So you just want to slide your knees up a little bit further underneath you. So make sure that your back is flat, your head is long. And all you're going to do is suck in your tummy without moving your back for 10 seconds. You do that five times, and you don't need any rest. Just make sure you breathe the whole time. This is the last exercise we're going to show actually working the back. And what Kirsty's going to do to start off with, she's going to suck her tummy in, and then she's going to lift up here. And so she's actually working her serratus anterior, which are these muscles here, until her shoulder blades are flat. So she's going to lift up and extend. She can extend an arm first while maintaining the lift, and then she's going to extend the opposite leg, but only until the back stays straight. She doesn't want to make you extend even more and show everyone that you're going to arch. You don't want to see that. And bring it back down, and we'll go back to the start again. So she's going to suck the tummy in. She's going to extend the shoulder blades, and so they're flat. And then she's going to extend the opposite arm this time, and extend the diagonal, the opposite leg, making sure the body stays flat, and trying not to wobble at all, and bring it back in again. We're going to do five each side, so it's 10 in total. We're going to try and make it as stable as possible. That's it. Extend the opposite leg not lifting too high. So you've got to make sure that your players know how high they can lift, because every player is going to be different depending on the flexibility of each player. One player may be able to go straighter, some of the players may only be able to lift down to here.
you will find that if you're lifting too high that your, your lower back may ache, but that is about all on this exercise. You just want to make sure that if they're working properly that they actually ex extend. And if you put a hand on where they're going to, when they lift an arm up, I can actually feel that her shoulder blade is flat. If you do it badly and let yourself drop down, I said just drop down, do it badly, you can see the shoulder blade protruding and she's not actually working this area anymore. They start these exercises now and they go on to the progressions then they can actually start getting on some more interesting exercises like on the Swiss ball later on when they're a bit older. I'm just old, I've got no hips left. Good. 